Solicitor General, appearing for the Union of India, submitted that statehood will be restored to Jammu and Kashmir and that its status as a, un- as a union territory is temporary. The much-awaited verdict has been finally delivered by the Supreme Court of India. Recently, the court ruled on the abrogation of Article 370, affirming its legality and dismissing any grounds to question the executive powers of the centre. The bench composed of Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur and Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Sanjeev Khanna, B.R. Gawai and Surikant concluded this after a 16-day hearing. Now this decision solidifies permanence of the centre's choice back in 2019 on this matter. Now one may question, what exactly was Article 370? Well in very simple terms, a temporary provision. A temporary provision in the Indian constitution that granted special status to the former state of Jammu and Kashmir. This unique provision allowed the region to have its own constitution, a distinct flag and a limited interference from the Indian government. Under Article 370, laws apart from those concerning defence, foreign affairs, finance and communication required approval from the state government for application in Jammu Kashmir. Citizens of Jammu and Kashmir were subjected to different laws regarding citizenship, property ownership and fundamental rights preventing individuals from other states to purchase land in the region. Additionally, the central government could not declare any emergency due to initial unrest in the state without the state government's agreement. Drafted in 1947 by Sheikh Abdullah, Article 370 was adopted in 1949 after discussions with the Indian Constituent Assembly. However, in 2019, the Narendra Modi-led BJP government abolished Article 370, leading to the division of Jammu and Kashmir into Union territories of Ladakh and JNK. Critics argued against the abrogation, stating that the term Jammu and Kashmir Constituent Assembly had ended in 1957, granting the 370 as a permanent status. They highlighted concerns about impacting the region's autonomy and demographic composition. However, whatever was happening in the valley was becoming a big concern for the central government in New Delhi due to the Article 370. Countless terror attacks were happening and the Hurriyat leaders were pressing secession, prompting the government in 2019 to finally abrogate the special provisions nauseating the state. On 5th of August 2019, the central government led by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi abrogated both 370 and 35A. The centre defended the abrogation asserting that there was no constitutional discrepancy in nullifying a provision providing special status to Jammu and Kashmir. It argued that the law hindered the region's development and mentioned reduced militant activities and security casualties post-abrogation. But the opposition didn't accept the decision. Countless pleas were filed in the Supreme Court. And as a result, the Apex Court heard arguments from various legal representatives including Attorney V. R. Venkat Ramani, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta and senior advocates for and against the Centre's decision. The constitutional validity of the abrogation, challenges to the Reorganisation Act and the imposition of the Governor's and President's rule in the region were subject of debate. But now it is almost certain that Supreme Court is in favour of not touching the matter anymore. Solicitor General, appearing for the Union of India, submitted that statehood will be restored to Jammu and Kashmir and that its status as a, un- as a union territory is temporary. However, it has declared that the centre must restore the Assembly Legislature as soon as possible and restore the elections by September 2024.